Notice the premise of your question. It's a natural premise. Said the search for extraterrestrial intelligence comes with the implication, one, that we are intelligent, <laughs> two, that we would be able to spot other intelligence if it's there, and if we did, we'd be able to communicate with it in some meaningful way. Now, we have life forms on this planet with whom we have DNA in common and with whom we cannot communicate in any meaningful way. Look at chimpanzees with 98% identical DNA to humans. But you're not having a meaningful conversation with a chimpanzee. Yet there's a trifling difference in our DNA. And so that poses the question, we like to tell ourselves that we are so far smarter than chimpanzees. We have poetry and philosophy and Hubble telescope and art. What does the chimp have? The chimp can stick, put a stick in a termite mound, maybe stack some blocks and reach a banana possibly some rudimentary sign language. That's it. What humans can do that? Human toddlers can do that. The smartest chimp is not smarter than a human toddler. Yet, there's a trifling difference in our genetic code. Any life form you find on another planet is going to be way more different from us than we are from our closest genetic relative on our own planet. Who are we to think that we'd be able to communicate with another species from another planet, which likely has no DNA in common with us at all, yet we cannot have a conversation with chimps or any creature on Earth that has a bigger brain than we do, include dolphins and whales among them. In fact, and I've said probably on YouTube expounding on this, imagine a species of alien that you happen upon, and they are this 2% difference in DNA from us that we are from chimps. This trifling 2%. But look what that 2% did for us relative to chimps. Imagine what that 2% would do for the alien relative to us. If it scales this way, that would mean they would roll Stephen Hawking forward at their conventions and say this human is slightly smarter than the rest because he can do astrophysics calculations in his head like our little Timmy over here who just came back from preschool. <laughs> that civilization would not possibly view us as intelligent, any more than we view other animals on this earth as intelligent. So to say how many intelligent life forms are out there, I'm even hesitant to answer that question. I can go through Drake equation with the astrophysical quantities, the, the, the star formation rate, how many stars might be in the Goldilocks zone, how many stars have planets, how many might, might have life, or complex life. I can do that. We get some good estimates for that. But if you want to ask how many are intelligent, and then of those who are intelligent, because we define ourselves intelligent, but if aliens were trying to communicate with us a thousand years ago, we would just have, well, that was the Dark Ages, forget that. Um, 2,000 years ago, we have the Roman Empire. They're technologically advanced, but they don't have radio telescopes. Earth would show up dark in that survey. Yet we had what we call intelligent life in the world. So, the audacity, the bodaciousness, the hubris of us to suggest that we can define what intelligence is elsewhere and then by our very measure of searching, find it and even communicate with it. So I have deeply rooted skepticism 
of what it means to find something that's intelligent. Perhaps the best evidence that there is intelligent life in the universe is that they've avoided us entirely. <laughs> Thank you all.